Hi guys, welcome to Monocure 3D Pro Tips. Today I'm very, very excited because we have the Illigoo Satin 2. Let's get on with it. So here we go guys, the Elegoo Satin 2. Now I'm pretty excited by this because this will be Monocure 3D's first sort of larger format 8K printer. So we're looking forward to it. The last time we looked at this size was the, the much larger AnyCubic M3 Max, which was actually a 7K screen. So this, since it's a bit smaller, it's a 10 0.8 inch screen, it should be better quality. Here we've got power line. We haven't unboxed uh, an Elegoo for a while on the set, so I'm looking forward to this and seeing how they've uh, developed their, their product and their range and how they're packaging things now. We've never seen this before. It's, it's certainly packaged well with this foam all the way around. All right, let's have a look at this, this guy. Now it's interesting just to have a look at the bottom. It's a molded plastic and the feet are actually molded as part of the, the actual base. Obviously quite a few hex head screws here holding it together if you ever need to get inside of it. So it looks like that's the entry point. Straight away you can see though it is, it is a plastic material, probably an ABS. So they certainly haven't scrimped on the plastic. They've got that plastic and then they've also covered in that sort of thin plastic wrap. We call it glad wrap here in Australia. Just on the design of the front, they actually have put some effort in here. Still no handle on the lid. Now that's an interesting way to have the build plate sitting in there like that. Makes sense, keeping the profile small. So this uh, build plate, they haven't gone any any sort of etching. Now we saw with the, the uh, AnyCubic newer printers there, putting on this, uh, this etched checker pattern. And that certainly doesn't have it. It's just a very smooth aluminium. So we'll see how that goes. The Illigoo have always done this and I'm not sure why they do, but they use this ball joint. They've gone with very much larger and obviously to, for the size of the build plate, hex head bolts or screws here to tighten it off. That's um, interesting. I like that. That's really big and robust, it looks like. We'll see how that goes over time with the resin. We know that uh, the ones from AnyCubic don't like the resin fumes and they usually break, so we'll see how that one goes. But apart from the ball joint, um, that's a solid piece of aluminium and a tapered edge there, and you know it looks pretty good. While we're here, we'll just have a quick look at this tool kit. Let's see what they've given us this time. The gloves, as usual. These would probably be a pair of, yeah, a pair of the old blue snips. This looks like some sort of filter system. It's got a USB on the bottom of it, and we'll see where that goes. It certainly looks like a filter system of some sort. So that'll be interesting to see what that does. The plastic scraper, as I always say, these are great for the VAP, not so good for the build plate. The build plate, you want to use this one, the metal one. It's got that tapered edge on it, so it's really good for getting the, the prints off the, the build plate. Look, I've already scratched it, which is great. The power, the AC adapter. So that would, obviously, you've got your kettle cable, we call them, in there. And now here you've got your little your tool kit. So you've got your large uh, Allen key for these large hex head bolts and your other bits and pieces. And there's a spare one in there as well. So that's quite good to see. These are always handy, the filters. We always like them. These probably aren't so handy unless you're worried about catching COVID. They're probably quite good for sanding if you're sanding and you don't want the dust particles. Like all these guys have, they've improved their user manual. It looks pretty comprehensive, straightforward. And I'm gonna say the front part is in English and the back part is also in English. So there you go. And of course, the USB stick, which we always recommend that you get something a little bit better than this because these can fail. Here we go. This is something that we haven't seen before. Looks like a little quick guide sitting in the bottom of the vat here. I'm gonna take that off and it talks about the leveling instruction. So this must be their leveling card. A quick look at the vat just while we're here and the rest of the printer. So it's got the standard screws here. Now let's see if these come all the way out. Now, isn't this interesting? They've gone with this huge big clamping screw here, but then here on the vat, they're very, very small. You know, this is a big printer. I wanna see something big here, guys. Like this is, you know, small and they pull all the way out and you know that I don't like that. I like it in the fact that you can take them out for cleaning and they're not gonna end up with resin and things on them but I don't like them because you can lose them. And of course, they don't give you a spare. Just looking around here, 
quite a small little touch screen. A little bit of nice design here again. And, and here's this design I was talking about before going up, you know, in the same shape as the lid. And so when the lid goes on, you'll see that that design is, is drawn up through. And it's quite nice. Just looking around the printer quickly, a large Z dual rail axis here with a single screw. And I don't think that's attached. I think it's just sitting inside a hole at the top of that there. And if you have a look on the top there, you'll see that you can actually unscrew that. So I guess if you need to get that out or repair it, you can. Where is the end stop? There's the end stop. You can see the little blade that comes down and, and interrupts that. Having that blade is quite good because you can change the height of it. You know, if you're putting a wham bam on or something, you could actually extend it if you needed to. Just have a quick look at the top here. We've seen this before. So they've got little divots here, I guess you call them. And they're just, in this case, extruded screws. So that rather than the, the hex head uh, bolts sitting flat like the rest of them, they're just coming out a little bit. When you're taking this off, you'd need to remember that these four go in this corner, but that's just so it'll sit in there. Look, to be honest, it wouldn't be the end of the world if it didn't, because you've still got these here. They've done a much better job of keeping this sort of sealed from you know, an accidental spill of resin, except for this big gaping hole here, and of course the two holes where the screws go. Now I'm assuming they go all the way through. So again, not that great if you had a resin spill. Moving around, there's a bit of an air intake there. The USB's on the side here. It is difficult to get to. You can put an extension so you can put it at the front. I don't know why they wouldn't put it on the front there. Big power button. And this side, just more air intake. And then around here, we have the spot for the power adapter, which goes in here. You know, the only thing we haven't spoken about, which is something that I've never seen before, is this here. I'm gonna guess that that is the spot for this. We will find out. Now, apart from that, that's it. It's a pretty standard MSLA printer, except the fact that this one is 8K. I'm gonna invite John on now to take over and he can actually set this thing up and show you guys how it actually works. Thanks, Charlie. Wow, what a lot of gear. I'm gonna have a look at this plate here with the big ball joint. When you think about it, all the other larger printers have got the connection points further out. So, you know, it's less likely to move around. So if they're gonna keep rolling with this um, ball joint concept, they've had to scale it right up to prevent it from actually moving around. Because as you can imagine, if there's a model on one side of the plate that's pulling and pulling and pulling, eventually that plate's gonna start tilting. So, you know, they've gone with hefty screws to make sure that that doesn't happen. As Charlie said, I really hope this plastic's been researched properly. Uh, Cause in the past with all the anti-cubic plastic knobs, they fall apart. Although having said that, the uh, the knobs on the original satin, I don't think they fell apart. It is always a puzzle when they put these protective sheets on and then there's no existing protective sheet underneath that in case you have a spill. It's like a bare polarizer. Although that looks shiny enough to be a piece of glass. So this might be an upgraded fancy bit of LCD screen going on here with its own built-in glass on the top. Glass is always much easier to clean as I found with the, um, the old Creality LD00 R and H. And it's good to see that they're actually starting to come out with printers where there's a fine layer of glass on top of the LCD screen because that definitely doesn't look like the polarizer. It's probably underneath that glass. So that's great, that's a good sign. Let's have a look at the top. This is interesting, we have a hole in the back which is covered by a plate. It looks like possibly you can put your own ventilation into the system. So they've pre-cut a hole for you, which is great. And they might, might already have an adapter and a tube that can work with that. Let's have a look at the, the vat itself. Interesting that they've put a protective sheet underneath the FEP sheet. That's quite good actually, because uh, during transport, there's great potential for that FEP sheet that's pre-installed to get damaged. And you know how much of a fan I am on these systems where you've got two plates that need to sandwich the FEP sheet. It's a big job <laughs> and it takes a while. I might just, while I'm here, take that protective sheet off the top of that. We'll put that in place now. Let's tighten that up. They really should make the screws just that little bit shorter so it doesn't take so long. Now I'm going to put that filter in there. I, I, I love USB slots. This, they're so fun to align and get right. Oh, if only it was USB-C. The base is metal, that's good. That's the important bit. Metal against metal, less flex on that uh, plate. The front here, we've got a whopping great power button. Hard to miss. I'm just gonna peel that off so we can see the screen a little better. Now what options do we have here? 
Tool, System and Print. Let's have a look at Tool. Let's go to Manual and let's move the plate up so that we can actually attach the build plate. Oh, that's slow. Let's put this behemoth of a build plate on here. Tighten that up. Ooh, that's a solid screw. Can't go wrong with that. And there is a solid bit of Allen key. So I'm just gonna loosen off both of these and we should see it spring down. There we go. So now it's sprung down, it's free to move up and down as well as pivot around that ball joint. The only downside with this ball joint um, concept is that it can twist that way. And so you've got to eyeball it as it's going down to make sure it's in alignment with the, um, the LCD screen at the bottom. So now that I've got everything loosened up, I'm going to go back and do the home. Now, I haven't got anything in between the build plate and the FEP sheet, but I don't plan to slide it around on there. I'm just going to line it before it even touches. Just get it nicely squared up. That's good. There she goes. So it's in position now. With that spring that's pushing down from the ball joint, that's actually holding it down quite firmly. They essentially want you to tighten up number one first and then number two. And we'll just do that gradually till we get a good lock. Make sure that there's no movement there. It kind of feels like you, you don't have to be too cautious because it does need to be fairly tight. Now, if I had a bit more time, I would take the vat out. I would get a piece of paper on each corner and just check to see whether it's completely even against that screen. But I think as is, that's good enough to start doing tests. Let's have a look in the system settings and see what we've got in here. We've got the tank clean, which is pretty much just exposing the bottom of the tank to create a film that you peel off. We've got a pro tip video for that. There's a stop button just for stopping whatever's happening. Setting Z equals zero if you need to adjust the, um, the home position up or down. I'll just go back to system because that's, uh, that's always interesting in there. So we go to info. This basically shows you what firmware version's on there. We'll do a check to see whether we've got a newer version available. Um, service will just give you contact information. Let's have a look at print. Clearly nothing in there because we don't have a USB set up yet. All right, guys, I've got the laptop now. I'm going to jump into the free version of Chai 2 Box. I'm fairly sure that version 1.9.2 has had the Saturn 2 in there for a while, but we haven't added it yet to this particular version of the software. So let's, um, let's do that now. So if we go over to settings and have a look at um, the list of printers down the side here, we can just add another one and select Elegoo. And then we scroll down and we should see the Saturn 2. There it is. That looks like our printer. There we go, okay. Very nice, so there it is. It shows you that it definitely is an 8K resolution screen and its build size is 218.88 by 123.12 and only 250 high. That's interesting. That's a, a bit of a limitation on the height. It's interesting they've gone with that. Possibly they figure there's probably less um, chance of it bending over if it doesn't have to go too high. Still that is a limitation because a lot of the other printers will go above that. Let's have a look at resin. For this exercise, I think we'll start with a good old trusty big fat gray resin. So if I go to the resin tab, uh, sorry, go to the print tab, we need to add this particular resin. So let's click on plus and rename this entry here. And we'll call it M3D big vat because that's what we're gonna be rolling with right now. Transition layers, we've got that supported in here, which is good. I, I like to go with 10 transitions because most of the other printers go with that. I'm gonna try two seconds with the big vat. Bottom layer count really only needs to be two because we're rolling with 10 transition layers. Resting times, let's go with light off delay. So light off delay is essentially how long it waits before it turns on the light and two seconds should be enough. The lifting height, I guess this will be a little bit bigger than the Mono X. I would probably go with uh, four millimeters and then another four millimeters. With the new firmware on a lot of these Chai 2 box based um, machines, there are now two different heights that you need to deal with in the settings here. So the first height will be a certain speed and the second height will be another speed. So for base layers, we'll go four, then four. For the lifting distance on normal layers, I might just do three and three. So the total will be six millimeters. Bottom retract distance, that's four. Retract distance, make it the same. All right, so lifting speeds, it's, the default is interestingly 70 and 70. I'm actually gonna make that 50 for the base layers and 65 for the normal layers. 
and our retract speed is actually the speed at which it comes back down into the, the vat. So we don't want that too fast. So those settings look good. Under advanced, we've got the, uh, the strength of the light. The anti-aliasing is set to uh, three. That's good. So I think we're good for slicing now. So when I'm trying to calibrate any kind of uh, resin on a new printer, the first thing I'll go for is the calibration model. So we're just gonna add the uh, MonoCure 3D calibration model that we have on our website. We'll just drop that on the plate. And there it is, beautiful. And back under settings, make sure we've got the, uh, the correct printer, LV Saturn 2, and we've got M M3D Big Vat selected as the resin. That's good, that's all good. And then we go slice. And then we go save onto our external drive. We're gonna now put that stick inside the slot here. So there's our calibration model that we just sliced. We're gonna highlight that. We need to get our lovely big vat resin into the vat. All right, before we go and use this lovely resin, I need to shake well. Now we don't need much for the calibration, so we'll just get a nice film in the bottom there. Pull our bill plate back on, tighten it up nice and tight. Now you'll notice there's a bit of uh, bubbling on the top there. That's all right. That'll show up as tiny little holes on the underside of the calibration model because you are printing directly to the bill plate. Okay, we've got the model selected at the front here and we're just gonna hit run and away she goes. It'll do its homing and then start printing. So we have this set at two seconds for normal layers and I think 20 seconds for the base layers. So we'll see if that's over cured or under cured. So we'll just scrape the model off there and we'll go and clean this up and we'll have a good look at it. We've managed to clean up our little model and we've had a good look at it and I think I'm almost right on the, uh, the correct exposure for this particular resin on this printer. If we have a close look at that calibration model, the tips of those two arrows there are only just touching. There's no gap in between and the arrows on this side don't have any build up of resin in, in the middle of them and the size of the lettering looks a little bit bloated. I'd be inclined to go from two seconds to maybe 1.9 to 1.8 seconds for this particular resin in our setting. This printer has some real potential, especially with that AK screen, that super high resolution screen. The only concern I've got maybe is how thick that piece of glass is on top of the LCD screen. Obviously that shouldn't be too thick. Um, if it was too thick, you'd get a little bit more blurring of those super high resolution pixels on the LCD. But I guess looking at that print, it's not too bad. The real evidence of that resolution will be a high detailed model. The only thing I would suggest with people using larger machines like this is to slow down the retract speed in your slicer settings. The retract speed is actually the speed it, it applies to plunging that back down into the vat. If it goes too quickly, you can actually cause the bubble of resin underneath that bill plate, push the middle of the LCD screen down as it's going down. Now eventually that resin comes back out and the LCD screen levels itself. But if your settings are not um, applying any delays or the speed of that's too fast going down to the vat, you'll start seeing problems like interlay adhesion starts to fail for models in the middle of that build plate. So try and slow it right down. That's it guys. I think it's a great printer. I think we'll be doing a lot of very high resolution prints on it. Catch you later guys. Well there you have it guys, the Illigoo Satin 2. What a great looking printer and the prints don't look too bad either. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like what you see, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button and most importantly, remember to keep on 3D printing. every flabby bit of my body shaking like crazy.